Ageing brings with it many insults, and it's not always easy to tease them apart. But research is uncovering a link between two seemingly unrelated conditions, cognitive decline and the risk of bone fractures. Both of these can have big impacts on quality of life and frailty, and both start silently. So anything that can assist in early diagnosis is useful. A new study has looked at several thousand Canadians over a decade and a half and has shown that In women, at least, where there was cognitive decline, there was often bone loss and vice versa. Jacqueline Centre from the Garvin Institute of Medical Research and St Vincent Hospital was one of the authors and she joins us now. Hi, Jacqueline. Oh, hi, Tegan. Your brain and your bones seem pretty separate. So what is going on here? Or what could be going on here? (laughs) Okay. Well, in this study, uh, we we looked at women and men over a period of 15 years and we saw that those who had significant decline in uh, cognitive function or those that had actually a decline, we saw that a, that a decline in cognitive function was associated with a decline in bone loss. So the two conditions seemed to be happening at the same time. But more than that, once we adjusted for other things, such as, you know, the aging process itself and lifestyle factors, uh, the, they were still significantly associated. Whereas in men, they also both declined over time. But once we adjusted for things, the association was no longer significant. It, it was there to some extent, but not in a significant way. So there does seem to be some link between the two conditions in women. And, and moreover, as you mentioned, those that had a significant decline in cognition uh, in the first five years subsequently had an increased risk of fracture of about 60 to 70 percent. And it's important that these are people who do not have dementia. These are all people who are in the uh, functioning well in the community. So it was, it's something that's happening early on. Is one causing the other? And if, 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 like, if the cognitive decline is bad, does that mean the bone loss is worse? We can't really say if one is causing the other because what we actually found was that um, cognitive decline was associated with bone loss, but if we turned it around the other way, we also saw that bone loss was associated with cognitive decline. So we can't necessarily say that one's causing the other, but there are a number of things, a number of factors that are common to both, and it could be, for instance, that things that happen with uh, bone loss or things that happen with cognitive decline uh, accelerate the other. So, Mm. for instance, we know that uh, inflammation, for instance, is associated with both bone loss and cognitive decline. So there could be something, you know, on those, uh, on in that factor. Um, also, uh, cognitive decline has been associated, or at least dementia has been associated with increased risk of falls, for instance. So it could be that there's, and and therefore falls would likely, you know, are associated with fractures. With fractures. So... so so maybe there's an external Sorry. factor that's driving both of these things, but they're both they're, they're both things that can uh, significantly contribute to disability, uh, people's lack of independence, and those sorts of things. So if there is something here, and we've got someone coming in with with the fractures or osteoporosis, or on the other hand, cognitive decline, how does this perhaps how do your findings perhaps help with screening for the other? Okay, so both of these conditions are silent until they reach the, you know, the, the outcome, which is often, as you mentioned, associated with significant disability. So you don't know that you've got osteoporosis until you either have a bone density test or you have a fracture, for instance. And you may not notice or other people may not notice early cognitive decline. So I think what this shows is that we should be really cognizant of the fact that these two diseases, which are very common, uh, occur, you know, may be occurring together. And so if you've got someone, for instance, uh, where you where there is cognitive decline or cognitive decline is noticed, that should prompt someone to think, well, hey, maybe we should look at their bones. Could they be at increased risk of fracture? 
Um, and if their bone density is low, then do something about it because certainly once you have a fracture, the outcomes are particularly bad. Are these two disciplines that are generally good at talking to each other to start with, the, the brain people and the bone people? Not necessarily. And in fact, um, what tends to happen is that people tend to look after their own condition. So in fact, with osteoporosis, for instance, we know that most people are not treated. Um, those who have fractures, we, they're about less than 30% of women and even fewer men are actually treated for osteoporosis. And people who have multiple comorbidities tend to be less likely uh, to be treated simply because other things come first. So it, it's, it, it's not always the fact that, you know, the whole health of the person is looked at. Um, what about men? You said that the, the association was there in women. Why not men? That's a good question. I mean, the most uh, likely, or not only, I shouldn't say likely, but <clears throat> um, a potential reason uh, is that in our study we didn't have that many men. So we had 600 men and about 1,700 women. So although the association was there, it simply may be that we didn't have enough men to show an association that was significant because they, they did seem to be linked in men. It's just that the association was not as significant. So that's certainly one factor. The other possibility is that something like estrogen, uh, which we know declines with women in you know post-menopause, that's certainly associated with bone loss. And there's some suggestion that it may be associated with cognitive decline, but the data on that are really very poor. And mm. certainly giving estrogen... Um, hasn't really been associated with improvement uh, One in to, cognition. One to watch then. Jack, Jacqueline, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Tegan. Professor Jacqueline Centre is the head of the Clinical Studies and Epidemiology Lab at the Garvin Institute of Medical Research and an endocrinologist at St Vincent's Hospital. 